Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be having a look at how you can close games early against farming and scaling junglers. Yes that means you will need a strong early game jungler and understand how to path, be aggressive and take over the early game. A whole selection of champions that work with these strategies will be on your screen now and what we're going to do is investigate not only what you have to do in order to get a good lead and close games by the mid game phase before they get too late but also consider how you do this when you don't get an automatic snowball in the first rotation. Yes, that means we don't get free first kills and a double scuttle, so how do we actually go about enacting these strategies in a heavy farming and scaling meta? As always, if you enjoy these videos, please consider leaving a like and of course subscribing. Don't forget to head to the gameplay channel for all of your champion variety. Coaching and Patreon links are in the description below. And now without hesitation, let's begin. Alright, so for this game, we're going to have a Rek'Sai versus a Kane. Now the thing is, the Rek'Sai was late to the game, Kane's team managed to get deep vision on the red buff, and we all know what that means when you have no idea what the enemy jungler wants to do, but they can see everything that you're actually trying to do in your first roots. Now the thing is, even in Master and Below games, yes, even up to Master tier, people don't watch the deep vision that they have on the buffs. In this case, the Kane sees the Rek'Sai move up from the red buff, meaning he 100% can flex into a vertical jungling situation. He knows the Rek'Sai is going to do Krugs and Raptors. He knows if she doesn't then go for a gank or try and steal his blue, he will have complete dominion pathing over the map in the early game, which means he will have tempo and a Rek'Sai at least style jungler trying to close the game early, and you don't have tempo versus a jungler who can farm faster? Yeah, that's not ideal. However, because Rek'Sai has literally no idea what the Kane's plan is other than he started on the red buff, she's simply planning on going for a 4-5 camp, maybe a 6 camp, into some kind of lane action, you know, ganking. The Kane can then decide, hey, you know what, I have level 3, 3 camps, I've stolen from the Rek'Sai right under her teeth, I guess. Now I can eat over the wall and have an amazingly early level 3 gank on the bottom lane. Bottom lane is the lane to snowball, the problem is it's a Senna and a Wukong, there's no chain CC, you are Kane, you just have a slow, at the Senna flash W's and ints it away because she feels she needs to be overzealous, most likely because they're in shock of a jungler actually ganking bottom lane for them and, you know, they don't know what to do anymore. Now there's quite a few things that go on here that allows our challenge jungle to actually maintain control of the game and basically set herself up for total early game control. Kane shows bot when we didn't expect it with our blue and taking the grump. Okay, let's finish the wolves, try cut the cane off from the scuttle crab coming at 315. But not only that, because we know we're an earlier game jungler and we can win that with our conqueror rune set, let's try and push pressure into the raptor pit. You have mid prior, you have chain CC, you can definitely try and make something happen. You have to keep your eyes on bottom line though, and you have to track because the Senna died that she will come directly from base to help the cane purely because the Wukong shoved and now also reset, which means she has prior on roaming at the moment and you cannot afford to give any more time away. Now once you're done being annoying, because you have prior in the mid lane, we can simply take our crab, E over the wall to escape, attempt to get a scuttle on the top side, double scuttle would be really fortuitous in this situation, but we don't have top prior and Twisted Fate has gone back to base. But this is where things get interesting and you still have control, you just mustn't freak out. You can try a gank on the top lane, if there's nothing there it's okay, but it's worth the attempt. We know we have tier 2 Krug spawning tier 2 Raptors, sequence those. You know at the same time Kane's gonna fall back, do blue Grump Wolves, and most likely reset so he can get the tier 1 Krugs, his tier 2 Raptors, and of course the first RNG Crab is spawning on the bottom side. That means not only do we prevent counter jungling by securing those camps instead of going back to base, you can also take your second spawn wolves, your second spawn grump, reset, and now move on down to gank bot, counter gank the cane, and fight 1v1 for who is the crab hunter supreme. And at this point in the jungle meta, after years of this stupid monster spawning in the river, I suppose that's all we have going for us. And I'm sure there's many jokes we could make about the fact that they're battling 1v1 with serrated dirks, but the funny thing is, and the tragic thing is for the Kane, the bottom lane are already engaged in a 2v2. The Silas has stolen the Twisted Fates ultimate with some experience leeching. They won't get level 6 at the 530 wave as per normal if nothing weird had gone on. So it is a little bit delayed in terms of impact, but down comes Silas, tries to help the bottom lane. The red team's bottom lane is able to turn it. The Kane simply mustn't fight the Rek'Sai. He does, he dies, she wins, she laughs. Rexa has to pay attention to that as well. If the enemy bottom lane had not run away, she would have had to back out herself. So make those calls in the moment, do the calculations, observe very closely what teammates are doing, help push out the bottom lane when things didn't go exactly as planned. And if the Silas tries to cheese around, even though he grabs the kill, punish him, apply mechanically, it is a close fight due to the Silas having that W button. And remember, we're against a farming jungler who doesn't mind this time to counter jungle you, steal your buffs, steal your cams, 
While you spend your time on something that's high risk, any gank or fight that doesn't work in your favor will increase the Kane's lead and any sort of ganks he gets off with his ultimate, he gets form sooner, which is of course what he wants. So keep the pressure up and the fact that the Rek'Sai is basically dictating the pace here is pretty huge as well. Run across the river, hold the wave for experience juicing where junglers were not expected to see us properly, so that's okay. You know that Kane held mid and moved up to the Raptor pit. This really is bad pathing by the Kane once again, shows exactly his intent, he gets cut off, he's only able to secure one camp, and even though it's not that bad because you can red Krug's reset, the Aatrox is kind of semi-trolling because why aren't you giving me all the attention, I'm top lane, clearly dragons are top side, clearly I have the most impact. And while that is frustrating because the Aurelia has a freeze, don't feel the need to tilt yourself, don't troll, simply go top lane with him, wait for the Aurelia to engage on his hopeless soul because he's pathetic, and then at least kill her, and now you can go back to base. Now with this move, obviously showing top lane is going to give away one of those aforementioned dragons. If your bottom lane are feeling nice, they just sit in lane, it's alright, we can collapse if he invades your blue Grump and Wolves. However, Lulu understands that a champion is one of the most irritating to play against and decides to give Kane an absolute freebie. And this is where your jungling attitude has to shift. If you would have gone to Wolves, Grump, Blue, maybe said, you know what, I just take my camps, wrong play. You're a carnivore, you're early game, you're 3-0, and and now you have Prowler's Claw, which means we need to use it. We need to actually accelerate the game and get two levels on the Kane before the farming and form and all that nonsense. And all of a sudden, we can actually do something now to accelerate this and take over. Remember, Rek'Sai's on the clock, Elise is on the clock, you have to make these kind of plays, you cannot afford to farm one for one with a Karthus or Fiddle, it won't work out for you. Now you could look to take Red, you could look to take Krugs, we do have an RNG crap here, what do you think you would normally do in this situation, to be honest? If you say go back to base and spend your gold to go to Herald, it's too soon. Maybe you want to blue Grump Wolves to sequence upward and gain some experience from farming. Or the early game Savant level junglers are realizing, hold up, it's a Senna, it's a Wukong, I'm really fed. We have a Lulu, let's sink up bottom lane, E through the wall, and get some more kills. Now the kills and the wave push are more than enough golden experience, and you see from the pings on the minimap that the Rex is anticipating the Kane be taking an objective right now. This cannot be allowed. And the reason I like this kind of game is because if challenger junglers like the Kane can have utterly deplorable and questionable pathing, you know, like going straight to red, ignoring the objective, and then while Silas kills a ward, showing up on it, which tells everyone exactly where you're going to be, which then leads to our heroic Rek'Sai and TF simply killing him, well then that's gonna happen in your elos as well, and if the Kane happened to actually take the Herald, well you could have stayed out and simply sequenced upside, although I don't like that play, I think going back to base, spending your gold on some items, and then sequencing down, maybe counter ganking top when he uses it, maybe ganking mid lane if he decides to use the Herald there, or simply sequencing all the way down and ganking bot lane to set up the second dragon. Either way, because of your ferocious and carnivorous jungling style, with this focus on early and mid game, you were in position to make any of the plays necessary depending on what the Kane did. Unfortunately for this video and for the Kane, he chose the biggest int play. So the Rek'Sai gets the Herald, and again you're thinking, right, let's use it. No, you got two minutes still, and even though you would like to take your red side camps and your blue side camps, the Raptors were just stolen by Kane. So how can we further take our lead as a jungler and a mid laner and move it to the bottom lane where they've been perma pushing most of the game? Very simple. Drive by mid lane to get the shove, create pressure, you have a twisted fate who can ult down bottom lane ahead of you. Simply float on down thanks to your deep vision. The cane sees you and shadows it, doesn't really do anything. Use Prowler's Claw, grab a kill, exchange ult for ult with the cane, and as soon as the Silo shows up that might kill you, use the trick we talked about in the two tricks for all jungling video where you can E and then W immediately to knock someone up and still get away. It's one of those rare cases where these kind of weird tips really actually works, and in this case, it allows the Rexer to escape, wait for the crab, and then reset. That's right, we're ignoring the blue side camps again, and the Aatrox is being so kind as to take our Krugs. I mean, obviously at 801 versus a 130 jungler, we haven't been doing our jobs and don't deserve our Krugs. We buy another Dirk, we have a Ruby Crystal, a Control Ward, down to the Raptors, which just respawned, Kane is holding the mid lane for his Silas, and I'd rather pretend I didn't see what I just saw. Rek'Sai says, okay, there's a dragon spawning, we got the Herald, let's get some plates with the Twisted Fate mid lane, we can shut that down, and then we can once again go bottom lane. Now Silas has gotten there first, they managed to get a whole bunch of plates for their Wukong Senna, as well as the Silas. This means you and Twisted Fate have to now make a mechanical play, you have to use your lead, because with great snowball, comes great carry responsibility. There's no point being a to know if you can't do what you're just watching which is mechanical goodness mixed in with a bunch of gold and a few unaware bottom side laners, as well as a fresh dragon for the taking. 
If you happen to be in Korea and maybe some other high elo regions, that blue doesn't belong to it anymore, so don't take it. Everyone wants to reset, they can secure it and maximize its duration once you've gone back to base. Now, in terms of mid-game macro, this is the most important tips about closing games early. We don't really need to talk about the late game stuff, but the mid-game stuff at 15 minutes onward is absolutely huge. Very often, junglers will fall back into quadrant clearing and full sequencing like their Karthas. If your team are grouped up and the enemy team has started rotating around, but you have a numbers advantage and they're shoving a tower in the mid lane, please use your mobility, get over the wall, engage, obliterate them, make the numbers advantage in your favor while Aatrox pushes top lane and various resets. And then just don't overcommit. Once a relay TP is in, once Silas shows up, simply kite back. Use the fact that you're on our even numbers. Keep shadowing the situation. There's no need to just disappear and farm just yet. Once your numbers arrive and you have the advantage, use your ult, whatever it may be, global, TF, TP, what have you. Try and get a few more picks. And now you can use that to get deep vision, steal their camps, and basically set up shop. If they try that again, you're just going to ace them and get a Baron. The best time to farm at this stage of the game is when you don't have pressure anywhere else. For example, if you're trying to set up a 1-3-1, your top lane is going back to base, you have someone pushing the bottom lane, someone pushing the mid lane, it's okay to simply take your camps now because you don't have pressure. If someone overcommits and dies, which will happen in your games, as you can see it happens in this one, there's really nothing you can do. There's no point dying with them because then you are dead, you give shut down, you're the most fed member, which means they can easily take an objective away from you. And of course, you're aiding in their comeback. So sometimes you simply have to rotate to those other pushes. If they collapse in your team and you can still win that fight 1v3, 2v3, what have you, do so. Understand the limits of your champion, understand the limits of your itemization, and just make sure if someone gets caught out on your team, you can farm in the downtime. But if you can shut them down to prevent them getting anything as well, it also works out well. And then your ADC and support can die mid lane. They probably blame you. They're yelling at you and you're just a cat sitting at the dinner table with the annoyed face. I think that's just standard behavior at this point. Now, what you want to do at this stage, if that happens, is understand that that second Herald is absolutely huge for pushing games to close them when you're an early game jungler and you want to actually win very fast. Make sure if they are out of position, use your Rek'Sai range, use your mobility, whatever champion you might be, obliterate one or two people, as long as it gives you prior on taking the Herald. Then what we want to do is make sure we're farming and setting up vision for the next dragon because by getting that and winning that fight, which you should at this stage, you force them to play really defensive. And if you have basic good macro of, you know, taking the dragons when they spawn, setting deep vision, sieging patiently, and then securing a Baron, you will have no issue actually closing out. And because you have the raw statistical advantage in gold, atomization, dragon bonuses, that's exactly what's going to happen in this game. And the enemy team, because it's Hilo, will understand there's no ways they can win it. So we're going to FF. If you are wondering what to do from the blue team's perspective or the red team's perspective in terms of how to play from behind or how to close with late game macro, I will link two games on the gameplay channel that really focus on that aspect because that's a whole separate discussion over what we're talking about in this video, which is early and mid game decision making. And if you're wondering about the advanced pathing practices necessary to be used in any phase of your game with whatever champions, I made a comprehensive video on that last week. It's never really popular because it's X's and O's, but it really will help your jungle game and your jungle understanding. So simply go to the channel to find that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Early game junglers, we can still manage to defeat the scalers. We can still manage to cut off the farmers. Just use this carnivorous river control style. Don't feel compelled to always go back to your camps. Keep the pressure up. Make sure you're getting those objectives. Play smart, jungle hard, and you'll have no issue climbing in this meta with Rek'Sai's and Elise's and so on. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Don't forget to check out the coaching and the gameplay links below. Keep your beards waxed and fresh, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.